Ouch. Hello, Ross developers. Welcome to a new live class. Are you ready to continue with the development of a simulation for the Cosmo robot? I am ready. So and today, what we are going to do is to create a world for Cosmo. Remember that in the previous live class, we have created the simulation, the gazebo model of Cosmo robot using the URDF format. Then for this class, we are going to create a wall for Cosmo to move around. Because in the previous class, the, the Cosmo robot was just moving around an empty space. That's no fun. So today, what we are going to do is to create a desktop. So it's a, it's a table with a computer, a chair, some space, and then some cubes of Cosmo. So Cosmo can move around there, uh, around the keyboard, around some books, also and play with the cubes. So for today is just the creation of this wall, including the cubes of Cosmo. And we are going to use the SDF format. So instead of using the URDF, we are going to use the more advanced SDF format in Gazebo. Okay, and uh, probably you are asking, why are we using this format instead of the URDF if it worked already? Well, because SDF is more modern, it provides more, it's easier to use and it's more powerful. It allows to create better simulations. So then the next question is, why don't we use SDF with the model of the robot? Yeah, that's compatibility issues related with uh, ROS. So ROS is not able to handle SDF at present and it works on URDF. And Gazebo works in both formats. So that's why for the wall, we don't need to use the wall in ROS because it's just the environment of the robot. We are going to use the SDF and for the robot, we are using the URDF that ROS can handle. Okay, guys, <clears throat> very good. So let's go remember that uh, I'm going to share with you right now a ROS jet that contains all the material that we are going to use today so you can practice with me at the same time as I am explaining, okay? So I want you to practice. Please don't just look at the video. It's useless that. So it's just that knowledge. We need to put this knowledge into practice and that's why we have created those notebooks for you, those simulations and all that stuff that you are going to get today here on the Rajet. So I'm going to share with you the Rajet that contains all that material. Then you are going to open it, and then we are going to start moving and working together. Remember that if you have any question, you can use the chat that is there on the video, beside the video on the on one of the side, your, yeah, that will be here for you. And uh, you can ask questions there. So I will be having a look at the questions from time to time. You don't have to wait until the end, okay? Don't get stuck. If you get stuck, you get to stop at some point, let me know, okay? Great, great. So let me see if the people is ready here. I see here that Gloria is back. It's a long time no see you, Gloria. Hello, Gloria. Epson is here. Wow, Epson again. Yes, Epson, how you doing, man? Nice to see you here again. Nice, nice glasses, by the way. And also Der Capute. Hello, Der Capute. Nice to meet you. And oh, Gloria says that she has a Cosmo Anki. Oh, that's super great. Then maybe we can do some experiments connecting to the real Cosmo in future, in future live classes. So maybe we can apply all this to the real Cosmo in future classes. Very well. Junjuan is here also here. Pratik, hello Pratik. And some Popescu, hello Popescu. And more people that is coming here. So let's start because the people is waiting for, is eager to start. So what I'm going to do, how I'm going to share with you the material today, I'm going to copy and provide you with a link. So I'm going to put a link there on the, on the chat. And then you have to click on that link. By clicking there, then it's going to open everything on your web browser and automatically you are going to get a copy on your web browser. So you don't have to install anything to work with ROS and simulations because we are going to use the ROS development studio that allows you to, to work on this for free. So you are going to see on a minute. So just wait for the link. I'm going to put it there. 
so you can click on it and get all the material and we can start working i see here more people lucas hello lucas um then uh, linda capito hello linda um yeah so the people are chatting there very nice let me switch to my screen so you can see how i'm sharing the projects with you and uh, yeah if i can find my screen because too many things here oh yeah so for example here hello dodo and let's go here uh yes so i have already opened i was testing that everything is working so let me go to my projects in shell so to, so um, tab sorry and this is the live class that we are going to do today is the live class number 47 and by clicking on it then i have this screen that explains about what is the rush jet so this is a rush jet and here there is a share button so i'm going to click on it and then get this link for you so fortunately uh, we don't need to convert into now into bitly so let me know this is the first time that we are using our own domain for the links so maybe uh, so in case that there is any error just let me know just click on that link in case that something goes wrong i have already prepared the bitly there so uh, that we can convert the link to a shorter one so you have the link on the chat go to the chat click on the link and then you will get a copy of what i just shown you there the same project you are going to get the same ross project we call that a ross jet you know it's uh, we are so funny uh, finding names for things so yeah so that's a ross project so how can we call it uh, a ross jet yes that's that's it that easy okay so let me check if people is working and is getting it dodo hello dodo and guillermo hello guillermo so i assume that you are uh, getting the project and got it or so epson can, it's confirming that it's working for you very good so uh, yeah the, the, the thing is that um for the new people the links that we share on the chat of uh, of uh, hangout were very large and then we uh, the chat didn't allow you to put those long links because it was cutting some of the parts so we needed to convert into a bitly to shorten the link and then finally we have improved our system so is our system the one that generates those short links and then it works Jun Juan is confirming also so let's keep moving then guys because we have some work to do so let me change again to show you my screen so you can follow with me the same procedure that i am doing great so here we are now uh, you probably have this rush jet here copied in your in your area in my case i have many of other live classes other projects and uh, you, by the way you can search for the projects for the rush jet that are available by using this this click here and search and then you can check for uh, other rushes or other people that are open only for the open one so for example if i look for the rosbot it's a robot by usarion company so you can see that there are of course there are my own yet about that but here there is one by the usarion company itself so you can go there you can open you can copy also and work with them I will leave that to you for later because today we have to work on the ross uh, the gazebo simulation of cosmo environment so what do you do here is the ross jet click on it and then just press open if you press open then this ross jet will open in it depends on the area that you are it depends on several conditions how fast this is going to be so uh, for in my case i i have already um, opened before so that is why it's faster in your case can also be very fast but it depends on the amount of people that are on the queue and now there are several people there on the on the live class so probably uh, in some cases you will have to wait a minute or so 
to open. But that's okay. I mean, once it's open, it's okay. So let's go. What is this live class about? You should get this notebook open by default when you open the raw shed, the same that I have here. And the, in case that you don't have it, for whatever the reason, because you close or any, or any other reason, you can go to Tools again and then press Jupyter Notebook. And then you will get, again, this material. OK? Great. Let me check the, the chat if there is anything. Escamiambas. Hello, Escamiambas. And RJ says, hey, when is the next live class for reinforcement learning? OK, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. RJ, I don't know. That's a very good question, but I don't know yet. Now, so let's continue with the with this uh, notebook. Uh, RJ, in any case, let me think about it. Let me think about it. And in case that you would like to have one specific reinforcement learning class, put it on the comments, and then uh, we'll consider to to create a specific life class for that. If all the people say it's okay. Great. So in this case, we are going to simulate the world of Cosmo in Gazebo. And uh, what we are going to do is to load some custom objects into Gazebo. So we are going to create now a custom object for the simulation. Then we are going to create the whole world file that is going to uh, show a desktop, a working desktop for work with a computer and some books, etc. And then finally, we are going to spawn our Anki Cosmo robot on that workspace and and then well yeah for that we are going to use the sdf format as i explained before and the result that we should get is something like this in this picture so it's a table with a chair some computer some here you can see the cubes of cosmo that is going to play with and then here some books okay so how do we create this world well the first thing that you would need in order to create a world like this one or another or different one is to have the models, the 3D models that you want to include into this world. So I'm going to show you a way of getting those models. This is a way that we use very often. So in many of the simulations that we create, and it's quite simple. That is why we use it. There are many other ways, but this is one that works. So what are we going to do? Well, for, for those models, what we do is we go to a place that is called the 3D Warehouse. And you have the link here. I'm going to click here. And this is 3D Warehouse. It's a place for the, the software called SketchUp. Sketch and contains many, many, many 3D models in different formats. So you can just look here for whatever, let's say a chair. And then you can search, and you will get many different types of chairs that you can download the 3D model and then use on Gazebo. Yeah, you can download here. So basically, you can do this and create whatever the environment that you would like to create. OK, so let me close here. And yes. So here, what do we have? We have, uh, yeah, that's what I explained to you. And then what we are going to do is to create now together, we are going to do this, this thing all together, is those books that you can see here, it's a model. So let's create that we all together, OK? So for that, you should go to 3D Warehouse but uh, as, and look for that specific set of books. I have included here the link. So you can click on the link here that I have included here. OK, so these new tabs should open. And then here you have the model that we want to download. OK, so you can check the 3D version, etc. Not necessary now. You just go to download and then select the Collada file. OK, create, download this. And then you can say that you want to save, save the zip file. And you can save it, whatever. OK, so I have downloaded, and I hope that you too also. Then I, I come back here to the ROS Development Studio. And what we are going to do is to upload this file into the ROS Development Studio. You are going to see it's very simple how to do that. For that, we are going to go to Tools. 
and open the IDE. Select here the IDE. So let me put it here on the side. Okay, great. So on the IDE, you, you can see several workspaces already made. The one that we are interested in here today is on the simulation workspace. If you open that and then go to source, you can see that we have here a directory that is called Cosmos Simulation. If you open it, then you will see the Cosmo description and then the Cosmo gazebo. The Cosmo description is the ROS package that contains the description of Cosmo, the one that we created last week. So it's here already. Okay, so this is what we did last week. It's already here. Then it's called Cosmo description. Then on Cosmo gazebo, we have another ROS package that what contains is everything related to the gazebo simulation for the creation of the wall. I have included already, so I have created the package for you, and I have included some directories there that we are going to populate together. This is just to speed things up, okay? So you can create yourself. This is manually. Also, uh, I have included a couple of models of objects here, the cube and the desktop. So we don't have to create everything here because we have one single hour, and, uh, and then we don't have time to create everything. But we are going to create one, the book. So you can repeat the process with as many things that you would like to include into your world for your robot. OK, so um, what's happening here? So you, here, you can see a, a typical distribution that is the, it is the suggested format when you are creating a simulation for a robot. And this is the, is the a structure that Gazebo, the creators of Gazebo, they they suggest that you do in order to create your simulations. So what they suggest is that you create a name of the robot underscore description package containing everything related to the robot. And then you create another package name, name of the robot underscore gazebo containing everything related to the simulation. By doing that is specifically this structure here. By doing that, you can organize better your packages, and then you will have no, not so many problems when making this project bigger and bigger. So that's a structure that I have created here. And now what we have to do is to include the model that we are going to create inside the Cosmo Gazebo. Then inside this Cosmo Gazebo, you have the launch directory, and then there is one models directory, as you can see here. In this page here, in, in the suggested structure, there is a models. And here is where you can put your models for your objects that you are going to use in the simulation. OK, so you can open it. And then you see that there are two objects there. What we are going to do is to create here a directory for our model. And we are going to call it books. So create a, a new directory here. How to do that? Do a. Um, right click and then new folder and call it books books in plural remember that and you please use the same names as i am indicating because otherwise some things will not work okay some things may not actually work because everything is prepared for those names you can change that later okay then go to that directory select it and then and now you have to go to your file system, local file system, and find your file, the one that you have downloaded. You cannot see that on my screen, but I'm opening it now. So I'm, I'm going to my directory where I have downloaded the code, the zip file with the books. And then you are going to see how I am putting this here and uploading it. So you, you have to have selected the books directory, OK? Because otherwise, you are not going to upload the file into the proper directory. OK, so there it is in books. You see, I have uploaded here. Let me check the chat and see if there is any question. So it looks like everybody is following. Let me drink some coffee.
Okay. Great. So no problems up to now. Then, uh, yeah, so the, I don't know why this open. Let me close here. Yeah, now let's unzip that. For that, we need to go and use a terminal to unzip. So go to tools and then select the shell. If, by going on the shell, you need to go to that directory that we have here. So let me go. If you do a CD simulation workspace slash SRC slash Cosmo simulation slash Cosmo gazebo slash models slash books. There it is. So here we have our zip file. Let's unzip it then. Uh, actually not, not yet. Sorry. Let's create here another directory that is called um, uh, meshes. So let's create here, let's do the same procedure inside books, do a right click and create another folder that is called meshes, meshes. And please move this zip file inside meshes. You can drag and drop here and then put it inside meshes. Great. So now if I go back to my terminal, then I can do a CD on meshes. So I'm now inside meshes and if I do an LS, I can see my zip file. Now I can use this command that is called the unzip. So it's unzip and then the name of the file is rain plus books plus one dot zip. And there it is. We have now put the model there. And as you can see, there is a, um, this file die and then another directory. OK, so that's OK. That's okay. Now you can delete the zip file if you don't want to have it there with a right click and then delete the zip file. Only the zip file, okay? It's not necessary anymore, so you can remove. So now remember what we have. We have models directory inside the Cosmo Gazebo. Models directory, inside there we have the books, is the model that we are building, the models. of. It's a model that is containing a books, a, a series of books. And then here inside the meshes, we have included the model and model die. The meshes are uh, defining the 3D structure and the look of the books. Okay, so this is the look and the structure of the 3D model, but still in order to be able to use it in SDF, in the gazebo, we need to create a couple of files more. So please stay with me here. I have included everything here on the notebook, so you can watch it later. But basically what we have to do is to create a file that is called model.config. So let's do it. Let's go inside books, select books, and then right click and say new file. This new file you have to call, call it, like I said, model.config. Then Open it by doing double click, and then it will open here on the side. And it's empty, of course. What you can do is uh, to come here and copy everything here. This is the standard. This is the standard structure of the model config file for any model that you would like to create. Okay, so you can copy and paste here. And let me go a little bit through it, what it means. And I'm going to select here, instead of text, I'm going to indicate that it's an XML file. So uh, can, we can see better. And also I'm going to increase the size of the font. So you on at home can see even better. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, first we have the tag model, then the name, that this is the name of your model. So this should be the, how you want to name this model. Then the version of the SDF, uh, sorry, or the version of the model, and here beneath the version of the SDF. And then here you have to indicate in which file you are going to include the SDF file that defines the book. So you have to create now, I, I told you, we have to create two files, the model config and then another one that I still haven't reach the point that is basically the SDF model of the 
books of the of your model. So it's the SDF file that defines the books, how it looks. Then you have to put an author with a name and email. I have put my, my own, of course, but you can put your own in your case. That's okay. You can change that, the values there. And then a description. Those things are just, uh, they are not mandatory. They are just optional. The ones that are mandatory are this, the name of this file, and the name of the books here. Those are mandatory because are the, the, the labels that the system is using to manage this model. Okay, now you have it. Remember to save this file. There is a dot here indicating that there are some changes. Remember to save this file. Go to File and Save. Or you can do Control S, of course, if you want. Great, we have the first file. Then the second file, I have included here all what I am explaining. So you can check also later. Then we need to create the books SDF file, the one that we have included here, indicated here. Okay, so that file books SDF has to be beside the model config. It's beside. So let's go to the, let me close these meshes because it's a little bit confusing. Go to books, again, right click, new file. And then this new file, you should call it books.sdf books in plural and then open it that's it and now here you have a content that you have to have in your books okay so let's copy everything here and paste inside that new file and let's check what everything means so there it is i'm going to select again that is an xml file and i hope that you are following let me check the chat if Somebody is having any problem? Says there is a question by Rakesh that says, does ROS support C programming? Not in principle. So it supports C++, but not C, the basic C. You cannot create nodes in C, that, at least that I am aware. But you, you can use C++. OK, no more questions. There are no more questions, so let's go to continue with the creation of these books. Great. So what do we have in this SDF file? Well, this is the SDF is the format for defining a model. And what we have apart from the header that this header is again the model tag with the name. Then we have this static true tag. This means if you put this to true, it means that this model will not be, so we will not use the physics engine to compute how this model interacts with the other objects. This means that if you put this model at a certain high, high a certain height, then the, the model will not fall down because of the gravity. So by indicating a static, it means that this model is a model that you are putting there and just stays there. So no, nobody can move it, uh, not even gravity. If it coll something collides against it, then this model is not going to move. It's like it is fixed in the wall and the physics doesn't affect it to it. So what happens, why would, do we put this to true? Because we can put some models on the environment and then be sure that the physics engine will not take time to compute everything related to that model. So we are speeding up the physics engine and using it only for the robot, for example, that we need or for other models that we need. So that is why we have in true. This means that the things, the, the objects can collide. So mob, mobile objects like a robot can collide against these books, but the books will never be moved they will be static there only the object that collides with this will get some um some some physics results it's only it's like it collides against a, a very tough rock for example okay so we indicate here true because we don't want to move this and interact with the robot actually then we have to include the link that defines the the model 
And here it says chair link, but this is not correct. It should say books link. So change this to books link. I mean, this is just a tag, okay? So you can put whatever here, but it's just in order to put it, make it more correct. So this is just a tag. Uh, anyway, so you have to define the link that is the book link, and then for that link, you you are creating the collision that defines the shape of the model that is going to be taken into account when something collides with it, and then the visual. The visual is defines how this model is going to look into the simulation. Okay, so you already know about those two because on URDF is the same thing, even if there is a small difference in the way you put the tags, but it's basically the same thing. So we define the collision, we provide a name that is also a tag, this, and then the geometry that is going to define this collision. In this case, we are indicating that the collision is going to be defined by the mesh. The mesh is what we have the download it before, the one that you have here inside the meshes directory. So is this file the one that is going to define the shape of the object that we have to take into account when something collides with this? So for that, we use this set of tags. tags. The only thing that you need to remember is always the same thing is you, you will use the same tags forever. You have to include here model. And then the name of your directory where the model has been downloaded, books, remember, is this one here. And we have book, then the directory of the meshes, remember, is here. And then the name of the die file that defines the 3D model shape. And it's this one here. So that's it. And then we do the same thing for the visual. So for the visual, it's exactly the same here is for taking into account to create shadows depending on the lights. So we said true, but you can say false now. It's not important. And then you define the same thing, the geometry for the looking of your model. And then you specify the same thing here. OK, so far so good. Remember to save the books SDF, Control S, or save here, file save. Okay, so now we have our model done. The books model is done. So let's create now a wall file that we can launch that contains this model. Okay, let's do a small test wall where we are going to include this model because up to now, the only thing that we have done is to define this model, the books model. And how can we spawn this into a simulation. That's what we are going to do now. So for that, you need to go to the walls directory here that is empty because I want you to create this now. So uh, go to the walls and then right click and indicate new file. Let's call this new file like test.wall and open it. So it's empty. And you can copy this code that we can see here. This is the basic structure for any wall. So you can copy this, put it there. And if you would like to launch this wall using a launch file that I'm going to show you in a few, in a couple of minutes, then you will get an empty simulation of gazebo. That's it, only containing a sun and then a ground plane where any other thing can be spawned. Okay, so this is a, an empty wall. Remember to save, okay? So you don't lose this. So we got a basic structure for defining a wall. This is common, so you can use this and copy in your own simulations. Great, you will have a sun, a ground plane. Now let's add the model that we have for the uh, uh, the one that we have created for the books. And how do you include anything here, any other model that you have in the models directory or that you have in other directories that a gazebo can, can get, can access? Well, very simple. You just put those tags, include, and then the URI and the name of the model, and that's all. 
Basically, that's it. So let's include this one here for the books. So you copy this and include here just before the tag wall that is closing the file. So let me put some space here and copy this include. So selecting that is an XML file. Great, so here I have included our books model, the one that we have created together today. Then I have included that is a static, just in case that it's not. And then also I have included here the pose. The pose means the position in the 3D wall of Gazebo, X, Y, and Z, and then Roll, Pitch, and Joe. So rotations, position and rotation and orientation. And at zero, at zero, 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 it's okay. okay. So now remember that we have changed this file and we can, we need to save control S or file save. How is it going? How are you going? Are you following? Is everything going okay? I see no questions on the chat, so I presume that everything is working. Very good, so let's continue then. Now, let's create a launch file that launches this wall. So we can do a typical ROS command to, to launch this simulation. And, and this is included here, the launch file for your wall file of Gazebo. Then uh, for that, let's go here on the launch directory that should be um, empty and then do a right click and create a new file and let's call this file main.launch main.launch and open it so it's empty and you can copy this code that is included here everything there control c and then come here control v you can select uh, that it's an xml file and what it does? Well, this launch file is a typical launch file for ROS when we want to launch a gazebo wall. So what you say is include this gazebo ROS empty wall. So this is a standard. So you would say always this. And then here you provide an argument to this launch file. It's an argument that is called wall name. And here is where you are going to put your name the name of the, I mean, your name, the name of the wall that you have created. So in this case, we have created this um, here, test wall here. So this test wall, we have to include it here. And for that, we use this, uh, this uh, function that allows us, it's called find. Then we have to put here the name of the package where this wall file is included. And in this case, the name of the package is Cosmo Gazebo. And then go down the path until we get our wall. So let me close some things here so it will be easier. Cosmo Gazebo, then walls, and here, test wall. So that's it. Cosmo Gazebo, walls, test wall. That's it, that's simple. Then remember to save, and we got it. We got everything. So now you can do a ROS launch. Um, ROS launch, Cosmo Gazebo, main launch, and then the simulation will launch. We are going to use here a simple method that it's included in the ROS development studio, but you can do both things. So it's called here in the simulations. Then you can go to the first option that says select launch file. And then here in this menu that appears, you should select the main launch. Click on the drop down menu and select main launch and then press launch by pressing launch the gazebo simulation will open and it hopefully if we have done everything correctly then we'll see our books there inside the simulation in the meantime that is opening let me check if there is any question on the chat there is no question that is good then it's time for coffee And there it is, it is launching and opening. Let me see. Uh, 
I have a question here. Electro Niraj says, I am thinking about making a floor cleaning robot using Slam. What are the requirements? Wow, that's a huge question, Electro. That's a huge question. So you need to have the, the model of your robot in URDF, like we did on the previous live class. You have to include the laser. You have to include the TF for publishing the odometry transforms. And then start using the, you can use the uh, ROS navigation stack. We have done many, many of those subjects in other live classes. So check, check for those. I cannot give you more details now here because it's too, too broad subject. Then here we have uh, successfully, uh, likely you have successfully spawned the books here on the zero zero. Yes, so uh, here is the 3D model and you can see, and as, as I mentioned to you is a static. So if I move it up, for example, here, let me move it up. And here, the, you can see it just stays there, up in the air. So it doesn't fall. However, if I insert a cube, so let me insert a cube here. You see, and then I move it the cube up, then you will see the difference. So you see the cube falls down. So that's the difference between a static and not a static. Okay, so far so good. Let me check if there is any question. If not, we are going to continue to create the full wall of uh, Cosmo. Any questions? I don't see. So I think that everybody is following. That's great. Okay, so let's go. You can leave this there. You can close it. You can do whatever you want. Uh, I'm going just to click here on the notebook. So we have this uh, launch successfully. So now what we are going to do is to create a wall file that contains all the other models that we ha I have provided here on the models directory. And as you can see, we have the books now the cube of Cosmo, and then the desktop. The desktop is a single, is a single piece model. That means that, as you will see, I, I did that in order to simplify, okay? Because otherwise it's too much work. But as you can see here, this desktop contains many parts, like the lamp, the chair, but Gazebo is treating all that like a single model because we have created here as a single model is the desk just a desktop then if you would like to be able to move the chair or the the bin the waste bin here or the screen then you have to create a model for each one of those and insert insert into the uh, simulation okay like we are going to insert also the books or here the cubes I did that just to, in order to simplify, just for that. Okay, so let's go and let's put everything together. So for that, what do we have to do is to go and create a new wall file that we are going to call Cosmo wall. So let's go to the wall directory, walls directory, then right click new file and create cosmo.wall. Open it, and you can copy this code here. Select the cell and then do a Control A to copy everything, Control C to copy, Control A to select everything, sorry, and Control C to copy, then come here and do a Control V. And here I have everything. So basically this is another wall file, like the one that we have created, but we have included more models, it's just that. It's just that. Uh, here you can see that we have the sun, then the ground plane, like we have in the other one. Here we have the books, and I have changed the pose. So it will appear on a, at a certain position of the desktop. Then I have included here the desktop, that is the model of the desktop with the chair, with the computer, etc. And then I have included several times the cube of Cosmo. Remember that if you want to 
create copies of the same model, then you can do it. But for each model, you have to include a different name. You have to include this tag here that assigns a different name to every cube. So you can identify every cube inside the simulation. Otherwise, you will not be able to, for example, delete Cosmo 1 cube or where is the position of Cosmo 1 cube. OK, so that's why you need this extra tag here and the closing one. But basically, what I'm doing is indicating, OK, so here there is a cube that I'm going to call cubes Cosmo 1. And the model for this is this one, is the cube Cosmo. So for all the cubes, it's the same model, yes? Then for each cube, I'm indicating the pose where I want it to, to be. So it's different so, because the cubes cannot be at the same position. And one interesting difference is that I am indicating that the cubes are false. What does it mean? It means that they are not static. So why do we do that? Because we want Cosmo to play with the cubes. So Cosmo should be able to move the cubes, should be able to, uh, to grasp them and carry them or do things with the cubes. That is why we are putting false, because we want to, the physics engine to compute the, the usage of the cubes. OK, so that's it. I, I have added six Cosmo cubes. Then remember to save this. Save. That's it. And now let's go to the launch file here that we have. And instead of launching the test wall, Let's change this for uh, Cosmo wall. Cosmo wall and save. So now if we launch the same, the same main launch, we should get the table with the desktop, with the books, with the cubes and everything. So let's do it. Go to simulation, select launch file, main launch already selected, then launch. And let's see if this is going to work. Let me check. No questions. Good. Let me know if you have questions, if you are stuck or something. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to put it bigger here. Okay. And remove the simulation log. And here we have the desktop. Here we have the cubes. Great. So, and there, there are the books there. Here, there are the books. Great. So we have everything. Um, what I mentioned about the cubes is that you can select them. And OK, I don't know why this is moving this location. But anyway, you can move the cubes to the edge of the, of the table. And then they will fall down. Now, if we leave them there. OK, it should fall down. Let me see why they are not falling down. Let me see. OK, so it's not falling down. <laughs> OK, that's just strange because it should be falling down. OK, let me select again. Let me move it. For example, here. Let's see if it doesn't fall down. OK, it falls down. OK, yeah, so I know why it's not falling down here. It's because there is a problem in the table with the collisions. Yes, so that's why the line is getting there. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you create the things very fast. And <laughs> that's it. But don't worry, it's a minor error in the collision created that I have created for the table. And I have included too much here. So that is why it wasn't following, following down. 
Uh, I will um, solve this for the next one, for the next uh, class that we, we are going to use the simulation. So basically, we have everything here. Okay, so what, what we needed for the world of Cosmo, then what it remains is to get Cosmo on the, on the simulation. Yes, and for that, I have included here, so remember that we have already created the simulation of Cosmo, it's here. You also have it here. Then if you go to the Cosmo description directory and select here the launch directory, you will see that there is a spawn Cosmo launch file. This is a file that we can launch in order to spawn Cosmo into that simulation. That means that only the robot will be included here in this simulation. So what do you think if we just try and see what happens? So let's do it. Go to the terminal that we use to unzip the files and let's do the ROS launch for this. It's ROS launch Cosmo description and then spawn cosmo.launch then if you execute this then cosmo should appear here okay it's a spawning the robot and and there it is <laughs> and what do we have here super big cosmo that is trying to get into the table, but it's too big for the table. No, Cosmo, you cannot play there. You are too big. Okay, so what is happening here, guys? So what is happening here? So what is happening is that the Cosmo simulation that we created last time was very big so the dimensions were not correct we were not paying attention to the dimensions and we created too big cosmo so that's why now it's too big for the table because the table has proper dimensions and also the cubes have the proper dimensions of the cube the real cubes okay so don't worry about too much uh, this is uh, something that uh, we have to solve for the next live class and for the next live class, we'll have this uh, robot, this uh, robot uh, dimensions solved and um, with a proper size. So Cosmo can be spawned into the table and play with the play with the cubes. Because on the next live class, we are going to see, we are going to make Cosmo uh, move around here the table and find the cube and approach by using vision. So very simple, okay? Very simple is going to detect the pattern that is here on the cube and then approach to the, to the cube. We can see here that on the cube, there are also a pattern. The same pattern is on the, oops, sorry. Wait, wait for it. This is the trackpad that I am using here today. So, and here, yeah. So you can see that on the sides, there is a pattern. It's a QR code then Cosmo is going to be able to recognize this QR code and approach it. So that's what we are going to see on the next live class. But for, for today, uh, we are going to stop here and uh, see if there are any questions. Let me go back to the notebook if I need some extra explanations. So, yeah, well, basically wanted to, to tell you that if you like those live classes, please give us a like on the, on the video. You can say a thumbs up then and also subscribe to our channel because we are getting uh, new videos every day. Every day we are publishing new videos. And if you press the bell, you subscribe and then press the bell, you will be notified when we are uh, publishing a new video teaching you about ROS. Yep. Finally, we'd like to tell you about uh, our uh, Robot Ignite Academy. That it's an academy. It's um, an academy that is online and that is using a method like this. So you will use a web browser in order to master some subjects about draws. For example, I have put here some of the courses that we have at the academy. For example, the ROS navigation in five days. That would be interesting for for because um, Electro was asking before about doing a slam with this. So that's a perfect course. This is the course. If you click here, 
you will be sent to the academy and here you can see what are the subjects that you are going to learn and how to move uh, how to create maps how to localize how to do path planning but we have many many courses at the academy you can check them all here on the link that i have put on the notebook and we have four self driving cars we have uh, one for ross 2 first course in the world ross 2 and it's using simulation so you can practice for industrial robots for self-driving cars and open ai etc have a look at them you you have the link here and that is all for today let me go to the questions and see if people is needs to to have any question so also i'm going to stop here sharing so here i am i'm ready for your questions guys let me see gloria is indicating that she got stuck at some moment but now it's okay good el farahi uh, has written something but retired so any problems with the simulation guys <clears throat> so no problems so i suppose that everything went okay any question that you would like to ask me for example applying this to your own simulation to your own robot any question i already told you that the next week we are going to apply all this to make the robot so we are going to use the urdf robot that we have we are going to spawn it into the table and we are going to make the robot to look for the cubes and approach them okay so that's the next live class and by doing this we are going to kind of close this the whole thing about creating some uh, ROS and gazebo simulation environment for programming and testing with your own robot. So that's just an example with Cosmo, but you can apply this to your own robot, you know? And maybe it depends on our uh, availability, but it's very likely that on, on the last week of February, that will be not next week, not the other one. Maybe if we have the time, then we will connect all this into the real robot into the real Cosmo. So we can actually see if the programs that we have detected, created here on the, on the simulation, they run on Cosmo. That, I cannot tell you for sure that because it depends on many, many things. Actually, Cosmo, the original robot, doesn't work with ROS natively. Cosmo works, works with another SDK that the, the guys of Anki, the company that builds Cosmo, has created for it. But there are some drivers that we can use and then connect those drivers into the real Cosmo. And those drivers provide some topics in ROS. So it's very likely that we are going to, to be able to do it and control from here, from the ROS DS, control the real robot. And, and then you can see also. That would be great. Let me see. Let me see what you think. Then finally, I see that there are no questions. Then I would like to ask you one question, one suggestion. If you can tell us if this time, a specific time for the live classes, it's okay for you. Because uh, we don't know, we, we would like to find the optimal time for most of the people. Then uh, it's not clear that we are going to change the time, but we are trying to figure out which one would be the most convenient time for you. So if you can vote for this, inside uh, below this video so you can tell me or now here on the comments that would be great if that time the current time that we are doing it's okay for you otherwise propose another one you can do it now on the on the chat if you want so we can learn and adapt to better create uh, your live classes for you that are more convenient okay so um, that's it. I don't see any massive uh, response now on the chat. I don't know what is happening. Everybody, uh, I can see that you are there and that you are practicing, but I don't know what you are doing. I don't know if you are playing with the Cosmo simulation. So let's finish here, guys. See you next week with another interesting live class about Cosmo and Gazebo simulations. See you guys. Bye.